Oh, hello there. Yes, well, that was a weekend, wasn't it? Yes. Just left with the lingering smell of burning in the background and an enormous sense of disappointment amongst an enormously large number of people, I would imagine. <laughs> Yesterday, my uh, comments section about Darren Grimes suddenly stopped. I think lots of people decided that just maybe arguing a toss about racism might not have been such a good idea. You'll always get one or two, though. Never mind. Anyway... Yes, there was a lot of silence yesterday. I mean, it was noisy, but there were a lot of silence, really noticeable holes on social media, which is unusual for a lot of people that normally post up a lot. So I thought we'd have a quick look at that today. Uh, the newspapers, uh, with their comments section, were uniformly not mentioning anything. Um, the Telegraph had, uh, only more prisons can restore law and order, because, let's face it, um, that's what you want to do, isn't it? You just want to build more prisons. Uh, they didn't have any of their commentators suggesting that uh, people throwing bricks into, well, shoe shops and Greggs were doing the right thing. Oddly, uh, the Sunday Times Times just had this piece about uh, how police can learn from Southpaw by a former chief comfortable, which is just a very measured response about modern policing. Yes, indeed. Uh, the Daily Mail, uh, if we conveniently forget about Sarah Vine being Sarah Vine, had um, had this. Uh, yeah, the left, uh, the comment is uh, the left hates its own voters. Now the nation is paying the price. Yes, you see, because we have a new Labour government and because they've been in power for at least a month, they, for some reason, just haven't really done very much. And we can't possibly blame any of this rioting or anything else on the previous administration because it's um, something, something, something Tony Blair. Yes, inevitably, of course, yes. I mean, how come, come on, Labour Party, you've been in power for a month now. Come on. Yes. Uh, a bit later on, though, there was, a, there was a piece by Peter Hitchens, which um, you've got to hand it to Peter Hitchens. You may or may not like his politics, but at least he's his own man, which I do admire. Peter Hitchens, it's time, time that responsible conservative patriots stood up to Farageism. It is not and never will be, will be the route back to the Britain we have lost. Yes, now, unfortunately, that's one of their paywalled ones, but it's worthwhile digging out and having a read because, yeah... The guy knows a fascist trickster, grifter, when he sees one. Mm, and calls it. So, um, yeah, fair play to him. You notice it came in a bit late in the day yesterday. Uh, speaking of which, of course, Nigel Farage brings us neatly to the grifters themselves, of course. And uh, having stirred up all of this racial hatred for their own political and financial ends, we suddenly discover at the weekend that they're very, very quiet. They suddenly remember that they've got an appointment and have to rush home because otherwise their mum will be cross. Um, yes... This particular American film I'm thinking of there. Anyway, yeah, so Nigel Farage obviously was writing the Sunday Express, as you'd expect him to, and he put this up. Hugh Edwards' scandal shows it's time to scrap the BBC licence fee, says Nigel Farage. Yes, indeed, because let's face it, that's exactly what we were thinking of yesterday, wasn't it? Oh, I wonder what Nigel Farage is doing and thinking about today. Oh, I imagine it's something about the BBC licence fee. Of course, instantaneously, yes. Yes, because, of course, it's problematic, isn't it? Because, let's not forget, that certain protesters uh, got banged up for... What was it? Ro Roger got banged... Helen got banged up for five years for, basically, conspiracy. Conspiracy to, you know, be a disruptive human being under those great laws that the last Conservative um, Party brought in. Yes. So... There is some nice precedent in terms of suggesting that some of these people should perhaps face jail. Of course they won't. No, of course not. Um, other noticeable reform people who got voted in on a promise to do stuff about immigration, uh, Lee Anderson um, initially uh, just posted up yesterday some photo no, on Saturday, sorry, some photographs of um, from him in a pub with his mates, of course, yeah, uh, safely, quietly away from any form of land loud bangs from fireworks or anything else I would imagine. Anyway, he finally got round on Sunday to posting this, my view. Right, okay, and he, he's showing showing the Sarah Vine Daily Mail thing here, okay? This problem has been caused by smug politicians who have refused to listen to the concerns of British people. It has festered and is now boiled over. Parliament must listen, Parliament must act, but it must not blame the British people. Hmm, well, I don't know, Lee. 
Lee, Lee Anderson MP. Is it all about the politicians, Lee Anderson MP, is it, eh? We need to listen to the British people, do we? Oh, right. Right, yeah. But we mustn't blame the British people. We mustn't blame them, presumably. Unless, of course, you know, they're not quite as British as other people, eh, Lee? Which is your fa- sort of basic stocking trade, isn't it? Yes. Moving on. Um, You would have thought Suella Braverman. Yeah, Suella Braverman, you remember her? She was the one, the only one that could sort immigration out. She didn't, of course. But um, anyway, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to say, you never guess what she posted up about this. Well, nothing. She, as of, oh God, yesterday evening, it, it was now, um, on her Twitter feed, she hadn't posted anything up in August. Nothing. Silence. Silence. From the woman that was going to sort us out. We had to vote for her, didn't we? Because she was going to sort out the whole immigration thing. Yeah, had to have her back, didn't we? She's going to sort it all out. Magically didn't. Must have been must have been must have been the Labour Party's fault. Um <laughs> other ref- notable reformist types uh, are Rupert Lowe, of course, a man who was voted in on promises to stop the boats, okay? Um and he basically in this piece, he just he just basically, yeah, as ever, just kind of neatly walks away from responsibility. Legitimate worries around the impact of uncontrolled mass, mass immigration exist across the country. Dismissing them as far right is wrong and will only add to that anger. Oh, right, OK then, yeah. You see, and that was the sort of standard line that they decided collectively to come out with yesterday, right, OK, which is they're the victims, right, because some people have labelled people like Rupert and Lee and Nigel and others, Suella, as far right. How dare they? How bleeding dare they? Because, yeah, I mean, we get this from my bestie mate in a bow tie, Rafe, okay? According to Sakir Starmer, he, he posted this up and lots of other people did around him. In, uh, I'm a far right thug. In World War II, my relatives were mur- murdered by both the Nazis and the communists. My father is Sikh, my mother's Polish. My family came to Britain in the 1940s, part of the Polish government in exile. I love Britain. Oh, good. Well, that's nice to know, Rafe. Yes. Hope the mob doesn't come for you. Because obviously, you know, being a nice person, he sends thank you letters after his birthday gets birthday presents. Being a nice person, of course, wearing a bow tie, you can't be a Nazi, can you? Hmm. Anyway, of course, inevitably, we had Tommy Robinson. Yeah? He can't possibly finish his uh, holiday early. Can't possibly come back. Uh, You know, uh, he will do, obviously. But, uh, you know, at the time of crisis, when we need his leadership... He's got to stay with the kids. Oh, if only, you know, he could get on that train and come back to the Finland station, eh? Set up an alternative government. It's what Lenin would do, but none of these people are actually out of that ilk. They have this kind of fascistic idea about being men of destiny, and they're the ones that are going to be men of action, they're going to do things. And, of course, when push comes to shove, they're nowhere to be seen. Just the sound of crickets chirping in the distance. Anyway, he posted this. Our governments work for the interests of the globalists and Big Pharma. Yeah, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, that's what makes me cross, yeah, about immigration, is the pill companies, or something, and we'll get on to the or something any moment now, obviously. They work against the interests of the British public. Yeah, you see, there you go. That's your political analysis for you. I told you, yeah, it's just like Lenin, you know. I mean, Lenin wrote quite a few books, but Tommy just manages to get everything into one little sentence there. We will remain silent no longer. OK, close the borders and deport every one of these fake refugees being housed in hotels across Britain at the expense of the taxpayer. We are literally paying for our replacement by men hostile to our people. Ooh, okay then, yeah. Intriguing from a guy who's been banged up on immigration charges, of course, and he's abroad at at this present moment in time. But, Tommy, as ever, I think I said yesterday, how exactly will deporting loads of people change the material conditions of the indigenous white population? Can we have some form of analysis other than Um, I think the moon landings were fake. Hmm. Anyway, just to wrap up, I was uh, intrigued by this. We had Peter Whittle doing the uh, I'm not far right, I'm the victim thing. Um, 
but you may notice uh, the painting behind him. Okay, uh, it's a Rubens. It's actually uh, Samson Delilah, a rather a gorgeous one. You can see it at the National Gallery, which is where I presume he took this. Um, the thing about this, <laughs> the thing I need to say about Rubens was the guy was uh, foreign. He was Flemish, and he came to Britain on a mission, a diplomatic mission, as well as being a painter. He came here to basically sign a peace accord between what had been very vexus. Uh, vexated, is that the word I'm after? Anyway, yeah. Nasty relationships between the Empire of Spain and the emerging Empire of Britain. And was very successful. He was a foreigner who came here and ended wars. There's a lesson there, Peter. Okay, You can stand in front of a painting and think that you're a cultured man. But as Adorno and Horkheimer pointed out about the Nazis, these were people that would kill as a, for all day long as their job and go home and listen to Wagner with their children and think that they were cultured. Sorry, it doesn't wash with me. And yeah, you are far right, because you meet the definition. There's an article below. Um, I like the basic Norwegian view of far right. Um, what makes people far right? They have some experience of far right people who are stirred up by nasty grifters and go on to kill children. I think there's a lesson from the Norwegians that we maybe need to learn. Ooh, anyway, at the end of that roller coaster, do have a lovely Monday. Uh, I've got a really humdinger of a I'm going to get stuff done week. Oh, yeah. Um, actually, it sounds really busy, doesn't it? Never mind. Should be fun. Enjoy.